Hi everyone, good to see you. I am Anne Marie Green, joined by Vladimir Dutier. It's hump day, so happy hump day. Um, all sorts of news going on. Of course, we're going to continue our coverage of the Derek Chauvin um, trial. The uh, defense uh, started putting uh, witnesses on the stand yesterday. And you, Vlad, we were talking a little bit about what we saw. And earlier, I spoke to you know one of our legal experts. There's a lot of debate about just how the defense did, and whether or not uh, you know the witnesses. That they had on the stand, whether or not they worked in their favor. So, you know, later on, we'll talk a little bit more about the argument that they're trying to build and how strong it is. But uh, everyone's talking about this this pause on the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. What does it mean? Millions of people already have the Johnson and Johnson vaccine in their arms. Others were scheduled to get it. Um, there's a lot of concern that you know, if you're somebody who had to travel a long distance to get it, you uh, you know, this may be a little harder for you. Maybe you wanted the one shot deal because he didn't want to have to go back a second time. So that's the kind of information that we're going to have to dig into today. Yeah, and because of that, the CDC is now holding an emergency meeting amid these global concerns, as you point out, Emory, over the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. All 50 states have agreed to halt the vaccine's rollout after six women, six women, suffered from severe blood clots. Uh, that was following their single dose, the single dose shot. Now, we should remind folks that this comes despite more than 7 million Johnson & Johnson doses that have already been administered across the country. President Biden and top health officials say the government is putting safety first by pausing the vaccine's rollout. Nancy Cordes reports. Vaccine sites across the country had to make a quick pivot away from Johnson & Johnson Tuesday as states began canceling some appointments and rebooking others for different vaccines. A little sad because I like the one and done. FDA officials recommended the pause after six women in the U.S. developed serious blood clots. It's uh, out of an abundance of caution. Johnson & Johnson described it as an extremely rare disorder as governors downplayed the news. Hopefully this is just a, a small setback that uh, we will overcome. This is an abundance of caution. But behind the scenes, in a conference call with White House officials, state leaders expressed frustration. The ability for governors to reinstill confidence after something like this is a hundred times harder than putting the files on in the first place. Kent Coster, the public health director in Kentucky's purchase area, told us he's concerned yesterday's announcement will deter some people from getting any of the vaccines. That is just frustrating for the providers because we know, you know, we're there, we're ready, you know, to give the vaccine, but the people just aren't coming in. The White House insists the pace of vaccinations will not change much. About 95 percent of the supply so far has come from Pfizer and Moderna. So there's enough vaccine that is basically 100 percent unquestionable for every single solitary American. Dr. Anthony Fauci told CBS Evening News anchor and managing editor Nora O'Donnell recent recipients of the J&J &J shot should look out for symptoms, including severe headache, chest discomfort and difficulty breathing. It appears that this adverse event occurs within uh, between six days and 13 days. So if you're beyond four weeks and you've had it a month or two ago, I, I think you really don't need to worry about anything. Monica Roberts Jenkins falls into that category. It's been maybe about four weeks now. The Houston paralegal says she would get the shot again. There's side effects pretty much with anything that we take, right? Whether it's, you know, surgeries, medicines, whatever. All right, let's bring in Nancy Cordes standing by at the White House.